Hey everybody, how's it going today? It is me, Captain Energy, and today we're taking a look at Cubase 13. Yeah, Cubase 13 came out about a month ago, and there's been some questions, so I thought I would answer some of them for some of my subscribers. First, I'm going to answer uh, the how do you get these images of your synthesizers to show up when most of them, when you bring them in, look just like this. They've got these, like a little piano key type scenario. What you do is first grab the synthesizer, bring it in. I'll grab Go To here. I'm going to drop it right here. This is Rob Pappen. All right. Uh, once we get that in there, we go to the upper right hand corner right here, and you'll notice this little teeny image that looks kind of like uh, an old school camera. Just click that. And then you'll notice that this picture up here updates to the synthesizer. So now from here on, you will have an image of that synthesizer. The cool part there is that if you decide that you want uh, it to look different, for example, if I go over here and we'll Mm, we'll go to a different preset. Go to storytelling. Okay, so you see it's a little more busy here. If I hit this image now, it grabs whatever image is up. So if you've got an image that you want to show a particular screen, say you've got maybe like this, for example, I go to the side and I can see the back where it has like some information about the synthesizer. Maybe that's what I want to have over here showing. I can have that, whatever I want it to be, uh, that's up to me. From the view of whatever I'm seeing here, it will just snapshot whatever's there and save that as your preview. That's the first question and answer. The second one is that you'll notice now, let's see, I'll go over to this go to that I just brought in, that uh, some of the items that may have been here before don't appear here anymore. For example, where are my effect sends? They're not here. Out of the box, it doesn't show them for some reason. I'm not sure why, but uh, to fix that, what you do is you right click right here in the gray space, and we're just going to go set up sections, bam, and then we're just going to go right down here to inserts. I can add my EQ back in, hit my you know sends, director, anything I want to bring back in. If I want the fader back so I can actually adjust the volume right there, uh, there are some that are there. And then, of course, there's ones that maybe you don't use. Maybe you don't use this notepad. I actually added it in here, but I'm going to remove it right now for you guys. If I click notepad, because I don't want it, it just goes away for now. And then when I'm all done, just close this. And there you go. Now we've got our stuff set up the way... You can have our effect sends right there. Direct routing is right here. Here's your fader if you want to be able to adjust volume on the track and work with the fader. Also, the read and write for automation. And we have right here, this is our channel, you know, the regular channel settings with the EQ and all the compressor, gate, all the little effects we have there normally. But if you decide you don't like what you did and you want to go back to default, you can just go right back over here again and hit reset all. Bam, and it will bring it back to the poultry uh, f viewing of what is there originally, which is not much. So just so you know, that is what you have for options. You Typically, I would go with something like a show all, almost a show all, or you can actually, if you'd like, set up your own presets here. So I can go right here and say, I want one with EQ, inserts, sends, director, and the fader. We'll just say, bam, that's it. That's all I want. Maybe Q sends too. We'll put that on there. And then we'll go right down here and I can say, save preset. Give it a preset name. Click OK. And now if I go over here, of course, it does exactly what you would think it would do. Set up sections. Go right here. And I go preset, which actually we're already there. So let's go to, actually we'll go to reset all first, sorry. And then if I want to bring that back to either show all or my preset just hit click that and now my preset is there along with all of the viewed items that i wanted to have available so that's the second question second answer the next question was how do you use reason within cubase 13. well there are a lot of ways to use reason within cubase 13. they're actually essentially the same as uh, previously i'm just going to redo this part of the video just so you can see uh, how it works because with the changes that they made on this menu on the, on the uh, left here, it can be a little more confusing. So I'm just going to bring this back to reset everything. And we're just going to show how to bring in reason. All right. So first let's drag in a copy of reason and there is reason. Okay. Now what we've got next is we would choose our instrument that we want to show here. Since it's not showing everything that's available, I'm going to hit Browse Instruments. And now we can go through whatever I want to add here. I've got a 
obnoxious number of add-ons for a reason. I'm going to bring in the redominated polysynthesizer. And now that that's in there, there it is. That's totally playable. Everything in here can be changed, modified, whatever. Um, if you want to add effects to it, you have two ways to go about it. You can either use your effects outside as an insert. Okay. And I can go over here and just drop in a, we'll drop in a delay just to show that it works. Okay. Pretty neat. Um, or since it's reason, we can also create the delay right here within reason. I could go over here to effects and just grab a delay from my selection of uh, rack extensions. And we'll drop this guy right in here, add it onto that synthesizer. Pretty easy. Um, if you wanted to use the effects in here with something else, for example, say I wanted to use a synthesizer that was not a Reason Synthesizer, or even if it was a Reason Synthesizer, and wanted to use Reason Effects with it, I could go right over here, and we just type in Reason, and the Reason plugin will show up in your racks, or in your uh, insert effects over here. Sorry, rack extensions, I'm, I'm talking Reason Talk on you, sorry about that. But uh, we could go over here and I could say, I'm going to grab this guy right here. We'll grab the pump subchain gate effect. Now, one interesting thing about Reason and uh, Cubase together is that Cubase itself will allow you to have up to 16 inserts here, okay? Which is a lot of inserts, and I'm not saying that's not enough. By far, I'm not saying it's not enough. That's a lot of inserts. Uh, but over here in Reason, uh, since it does not have that limitation, you can technically, um, you know, drop in your effects right here. Infinite effects, essentially, as much as your processor can handle. That's pretty dope. And that's kind of a neat feature because I've only used one rack or one insert here. Uh, and I can add more inserts if I want to. Maybe I want to throw in an EQ. You know, um, it's just neat stuff. Again, you can layer your effects, you can layer your sounds, you can build whole instruments with reason and bring them in uh, this, you know, using this method that I just basically showed uh, between here, where we have the instrument set up as a reason instrument inserted into Steinberg Cubase. Or, you know, you can just go as simple as you want or as hard as you want to go. All right, so for the final question for this video, how do you use Reason Players from Reason 12 with Cubase 13? It's a little different than it's been, so I'm going to show you how. It's a, it's a pretty simple setup. What I've got going on here is I've already brought in the Grand, which is a standard Steinberg instrument. It's a very nice piano. This one is the rock hard version of the piano. This is a bunch of versions on here I could pick from. Anyway, to hook up the player to this, We'll go over to Reason, and let me open that up. As you can see, I've already opened Reason, because just to save time, Reason takes a while to load up, so I figured it'd be a nice, uh, give me a good head start. And I've dragged a player in from the Players folder right here. I'll show you how you do that right now, just for your own sake. Let's get rid of these, all right? And I'm gonna go over to Players, and I'm gonna go and grab the Scales and Chords player. 
When I drop it in, it brings in this MIDI out. This MIDI out is what sends the data back to Cubase. So please do not delete it. You will need that. Now, if I play this, right now you hear nothing coming out of it, right? Uh, and that's because right now this is not mapped to anything. It's just kind of hanging out, playing to itself, which has no instruments attached to it. What I want to do next is I want to attach this piano to this player. Uh, to do that, I'm going to go to the piano, and we're going to go to my MIDI inputs. Right now, it's taking all MIDI inputs. We want it to take MIDI from this player, this one in particular. Now, I've named this already Reason Piano. I'm just going to change it just to Piano, all uppercase, so you can see it uh, when I show you what's coming up next. But uh, you'll do this because it makes it easier to uh, find what you're looking for. You can theoretically have multiple instruments keying off of one player or multiple players so that you have different instruments and playing differently for each uh, with each player on them. And you'll want to know which is which. So this helps labeling your stuff. All right, so now let's go down here to piano. And now if I go to this drop down right here where it says all MIDI inputs, right? Right now it says all MIDI inputs, but this is where your MIDI input comes from. I'm going to scroll down here until I see the one that says piano. You'll see it's in plugins. I'm going to hit piano. Bam. And now, in theory, this player is sending information to this synthesizer, to this piano, which it is, but you can't hear it. Why can't you hear it? Because right now, this synthesizer doesn't know it's supposed to be triggering sound. Right now, it's just sitting there quietly and letting you play whatever synthesizer is active. See how it's gray here, light gray? That means that's active. That means this is active. Well, this won't take standard input now, so I can't play it. And it won't play from up here because it's not, it doesn't realize that it should be getting or turning on for the sound coming from here. It just knows that there's data coming to it. All we need to do is go right here to the instrument we want to be able to hear and turn this little monitor on. Once we do that, the sound will then be able to be playable. It's basically almost like hooking up a speaker by turning this on to the grand, which before it didn't have one. So now if I go up here and I play on this piano player, finger chords and that's pretty cool um, you can go even crazier with these players like if I go back over here and we drop in they can get a little uh, more enhancement out of taking like an arpeggiator dropping it in after the player here You get the idea. Anyway, but that's how you hook up the players from Reason, uh, well, Reason 12, into Cubase 13. And that's everything for this video. I hope that was helpful. Let me know what you thought in the comments, and I will get back to you. If you have any questions, don't forget to ask if you have anything you'd like to know. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in with me today. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Be safe out there. Take care. Bye for now.